Hey guys, welcome back to another software engineer interview question. Today's question is called buy and sell stock. So the question is, write a program that takes an array denoting the daily stock price and returns the maximum profit that could be made by buying and then selling one share of that stock. So as an example, we have a data set 310, 295, 250, 270, 300, 230 and 210 and it says the answer is 50. So what does that mean? Basically our goal is to take one of those values and treat it as the value that we bought the stock at and then take a value that comes after that bought stock which will be our sell price and see how much profit that we can make. So the idea is if we buy at a low price and we sell at a high price that will give us maximum profit. So you can see the answer 50, the way that we got that is we bought the stock at 250 and then we sold the stock at 300. That gave us the maximum of 50. But there's also other values, right? I could have bought it at 250 and sold it at 270 for a profit of 20. And this could be any array which we could have different combinations. So. I'll go ahead and let you pause the video now to attempt to solve this problem and then we'll come back and review it together. Okay guys, welcome back and hopefully you came up with a good solution. Let's take a look at this together now. So at first glance you may say, oh this problem is easy to solve. All I have to do is take the smallest number and then the biggest number and then subtract them and then I have the profit. The problem with that approach is what happens if the smaller number comes after the bigger number? Then it doesn't work. Like for example here, the biggest number is 310, but the smallest number, 230, came after it. So if I buy at 310 I sell at 230, I'm actually losing money. It doesn't work. So that solution doesn't work. Now there is a brute force solution, and you may have thought of the brute force solution, but let's just quickly at a high level go through what it was and unfortunately the brute force solutions time complexity is n squared so we can actually do better than that we could actually get linear time um, but let's go through the brute force solution and the idea here is pretty simple we can create two loops the first loop would go through all the elements and the second loop would be a nested loop starting inside of that so here we would compare i and j and we'd basically say, what is the max profit? So since uh, here we're losing money, we wouldn't record anything, but we would keep track of the max profit in a max profit variable. And then we would check every single combination. So 310 would get checked across every single one. Once we got to the end, then I would go up and then we would check all these combinations and, and so on. And we would basically do that process all the way through and that would give us our max profit. However, like I said, the time complexity is n squared. Now, like I said, there is a better solution to this problem. And the better solution comes about thinking about what does it mean to make the most amount of money at any given point? So for example, let's take 270 as an example. The, the secret is, if you think about it, the most amount of money that I can make when I'm selling at 270 is the smallest value before I get to 270. So in that case, that would be 250. So if I bought at 250, sold at 270, that's my max amount of profit that I can make at that point in time. And if I went to the next 130, or sorry, 300, right, the smallest value before that is 250 again, and then my max profit is 50. So the idea is, find, at any given point, find the smallest value before that, and then subtract it with the current, and then that will give you the maximum profit at that given point. And as you go through the entire list, just keep track of the biggest point, and by the end, you'll have the max profit of the entire data set. So I know that may be a little confusing. Let's go through it step by step so you can see how it works. So the algorithm starts by defining two variables. We have min value and max value. Min value will keep track of the smallest value up to any the given point that we're at. So the smallest value up to i in our in our loop basically. And then max profit will keep track of the most amount of money that I've made or can make 
up to that point. So to start off, the, a simple way to implement this algorithm is just to take the first element in the array and assign that to min value to start. So we're just saying our smallest value to start off is 310. That's the first element. And since the array will always have two elements, right? You buy and then sell. So it needs at least two. We can do this. Um, and then our loop, which this is linear time, so the loop is going to go through it just once. That will start at one, the next, the basically the second element. And then the algorithm starts. We say, okay, let's first check our max profit. And the idea is this, right? We take the value at i and we subtract that from the min value. So we say 295 minus 310. And the idea is if I buy at 310 and I sell at 295, how much money would I make? So if we, if we evaluate that, it'll be 295 minus 310, and that equals negative 15. So in this case, if we buy at 310 and sell at 295, we're actually losing money. So since that number, negative 15, is less than our current maximum amount of profit, we're not going to update the max profit variable. So that's step one in the algorithm. Then while we're still at i, we have not increased i, the second part is we want to update the minimum value. Because remember, min value should be the smallest value up until i. So since i is 295, we'll say, okay, is that less than 310, what's currently a min value? And if it is, we'll update min value. So now min value is 295. And now I can go up to the next element. Okay, let me start again. We do the check. Is 250 minus 295 greater than max profit, which is zero? And the answer is no. So that's so we that's minus that's a negative 45. Is that greater than zero? The answer is no. So we don't update it. And then we check the min value. Is 250 less than 295? Yes, it is. Okay, so our new min value is 250. I goes to 270. Now, this is the first time we see a positive value. So we say, is 270 minus 250 greater than zero, right? This makes sense. If I buy at 250 and I sell at 270, I'm going to get some profit. Since it's greater than our current max profit, then we update our max profit with that, that profit. So max profit is now $20. So up until this point, the most amount of money that we can make is $20. Then we check the lower bound. Is 270 less than 250? No, it's not. So we do not update it. Instead, we just move i to the next value. Great, we're at 300. So is 300 minus 250 greater than 20? That is 50 greater than 20. And the answer is yes. So we put 50 into max profits. So that's the most amount of money we got so far. Then we check our min value. Since 300 is greater than 250, we do not update it. I goes up. We check 230. In this case, we have a negative value again, so it can't be greater than profit. So that's not true. And then we update the min value. So min value is 230. Once again, I goes up. Here we have another negative value, so it can't be our max profit. And then we update the min value again. And then I reaches the end. At that point, we now know the answer is 50. That is the most amount of money that we can make through this array, and we calculated it in linear time. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can implement this algorithm. So here we are back in the C-sharp program, and you can see I had that same basic setup. I created my array, which is the same as the example, but by all means, in your examples, you could try any number and see that this algorithm does indeed work. Then I created my simple method stub that just returns an int, which is the max profit, and it takes in that array, and then I just take that value and display it into the console. So let's go ahead and implement this. So we could start off by just saying, if the array is empty, then the max profit's zero. Let's just return that. So we'll say if array.length equals zero, return zero. That's always just our basic check that we can do. It's actually not too important in these simple examples, but for your interview, potentially that would be important. Okay, then remember the algorithm says we need two variables. We need int min value, which keeps track of the smallest value up until where we are in the loop or in, in the array. And remember, we assign that to the initial or the first value of our array. So that would be array sub zero. Okay, then we have max profit that we assign to zero because so far we have no profit until we go through.
This allows us to return zero at the end if the loop only has like one element, for example, or, or whatever. Okay, so then we create a loop. But remember, in our loop, we want to start at the second element. So we'll say i is equal to one, and then we'll go as long as i is less than array's length, and then i plus plus. Okay, now inside the loop, remember we do two different calculations. First, we're going to check to see if we, if we need to update the, the maximum profit. And then we'll also check if we can update the min value. So there's two different major operations. OK, so the first one, which is updating the maximum profit, we need to calculate the profit at that specific point, remember? So we take the current element's value and we subtract that from our current minimum's value. And I'll just say that's our current profit. So I'll make another variable called current profit, and that's equal to our current value in the array minus the smallest value so far. Because remember, the smallest value so far is what we bought at, and it's what we're going to sell at. So this will give us our profit. So I'll say if the current profit is greater than the max profit, then update the max profit with the current profit. So this is the, the new highest profit. Now you could be using simple the, the math functions in the math class if you want to. I'm just using if statements to make sure it's very clear to everyone. I just want this to be clear. Okay, then we have the update min operation. Okay. So this is pretty simple as well, right? We just look at the, the current element. If it's smaller than whatever is in the min position, we update it. So we say if array sub i is less than the min value, then the say min value equals array sub i. And that, that's the entire algorithm. That's all we did in the PowerPoint slides. All we have to finish off is by returning max profit, and that will be the biggest value. So to go ahead and see if this works, let's run the program. And as you can see, it says the max profit is 50. Like I said, you can implement this with any set of arrays and you see this algorithm actually works really well.